Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today is, well, I call it Art Therapy Thursday, but really it's just painting. And I thought we'd do something fun and easy and simple today that makes us feel good, like watermelon. Who doesn't love watermelon? Everybody loves watermelon. Summer, it's the best. It's like barbecues and family time. So we're gonna start thinking of something that makes us feel good, makes us feel about a time we like and enjoy. So I think watermelon makes everyone feel good. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go over <clears throat> my materials. Arch is 100% cotton cold pressed paper. Uh, it's got a nice tooth to it. I got my paints here. I'll go over them as I uh, do the tutorial. I have my water up here. You can't really see it, but I have free water jars like this. Paper towel, various brushes, my 2H pencil. Um, so let's just go over how, you know, I pretty much think anybody can draw a watermelon shape. It's basically a half moon for the big one. For the little one, it's like a wedge. But then you're going to add the side to it. And then from here, you're going to go like that. You're adding the outer rim, the rind of the watermelon. You know, and then we're having like the little seeds going to be going in here and various seeds in here. And then the rind out here, similar like that. This is really simple, easy tutorial to do and makes you think of summer. Summer's the best time. Everyone loves the sun. So I've mixed up grab some of this. Um, a lot of paint for this one. It's a wet on wet kind of situation we're going to be doing today. Um, I mix rose with medium red, permanent medium red. I have my medium green mixed with this, uh, this is cadmium yellow, pale yellow. So it's medium green, cadmium pale yellow. And then a hooker's green, I put a little indigo in there so it's really dark because you want a really dark color with the green color. So basically I'm gonna grab grab one of your bigger brushes. Um, I could grab, I'm gonna grab one of these. We're gonna get this fairly wet in the middle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which one is this? Let's see. I don't even know what that one is. I'll grab a different one than that one. Uh, the Neptune Princeton number 12. I'm gonna grab. But this is a fairly big brush. It's got this short little tip big belly to it. it can hold a lot of water and a lot of paint so we're going to put some water on my brush i'm going to start by wetting the the wedge area just not the whole thing just this part here i'm going to go in leave a little white by the the edge here when i hit the top i'm not going to fill the whole thing in I get that all wet. And I'm going to start putting in our rose red mixture paint. In some areas we want it darker, and some areas we want it lighter. If you think it's too pink, you can add a little more red to it. it. Might look a little too pink right now, but that's okay. It could be either or. You want to get a good amount on your brush. We're just going to be bleeding in areas here. Just putting in bleeding in the paint. Just putting it down. Like I said, if you feel like it's too pink and you want to add some more red, you can do that. So simple. So we're just putting in the paint now. So I added some more red to this one. Gonna let it bleed. It's got the spider thing, so I might clean up my brush, dab it, and just bleed it like that. So it's a nice bleed without having those spider legs that when you bleed, sometimes it does that because it's very wet. I'm going up to the top here. I'm adding in a little deeper tone. So we're trying to let this dry a teeny bit so it's more damp than wet. Um, when it's wet, it can bleed for days. When it's damp, it's a little, a little more controlled bleed. It's not as sporadic. So now I'm gonna add some darker tones in this. So I'm gonna grab my crimson. 
It's a deeper color red. Mixing it in. I'm going to add a touch of brown, burnt umber. And then a touch of ultramarine, just a touch. Not too much. Just to get that red really deep. Mix in some medium red. I'm going to grab some more of that crimson, some rose, and a touch of that ultramarine. All right. There we go. So we're going to do some darker tones in here. It's still looking a little too bright. I want to dull it down a touch. And I'm going to add a little burnt umber to it. All right. Let's just bleed in some. We're just pushing the paint around because the watermelon has like different tonality to it. I want to make it form feel more natural looking. And even where you think the seeds would go, you want to add even more tonality to it. So get a little more crimson. You can add a little more blue or burnt umber to it. And put it in the areas you think the seeds are going to go. Even bleed it up here a little more. I'm going to take clean up my brush. Take some of this paint away. This one's a little bit lighter. And since it's still damp, I'm going to go in and add a little of my burnt umber. I'll bleed in there a little bit, just right on there. And then add the crimson right on that. And then I'll give it that darker tone we're looking for. More natural. More melon tone. Because it's not as flat. Again, I'm playing around with adding in some of that deeper tone in here. And I kind of want an edge that's hard. It's going to dry hard anyway. Watermelon, I mean watermelon. Watercolor <laughs> is a hard edge paint. But I'm going to put a little darker tone on the edge of the watermelon up here. And then I want to clean up my brush and then just blend it. I'm taking some more paint away. A little bit down here too. Just making it feel a little more natural. Okay, we're going to work on the second wedge. Here you can get that deeper tone and you can start a different way. You can do wet on wet. So we can just leave that part dry. We're not going to get it all wet. We're going to grab the paint and I'm mixing, trying to get this crimson the way I want it to go. It's not cooperating. So I've got crimson, a little burnt umber, a little ended ultramarine, and then I've got that darker red. So I'm going to start on the edge here and the edge here, and a little bit down here. And then I'm going to clean up my brush, get it wet, and just hit that edge. There's a lot of water in this brush. And then move it around like that. So that will blend nicely. And I can go ahead and touch it over in here. Still leaving the white part where the rind would be, like close to the edge of the rind. And again, we're going to add in some deeper concentrated Elizabeth Crimson, the little burnt umber, 
just on the edge here. I'm going to dab it in around here. Same thing here. I'm trying to get it to look more natural. Just hitting the edge here and letting it bleed. Going in when I'm pushing it around. It's a fun one to do. I mean, it doesn't have to look perfect. Get the idea how the. Just taking off some paint and just I want this to have a little more edge to it. It's bleeding too much. I'm going to have to let that dry a little bit because you want it to have a little bit harder edge. Again, we can go back, back in and add some more paint. And around here. This one's still Feel like I'm going to put the seeds in here in this area. You can get this. I've added some burnt umber. So if that starts to bleed a little bit, that's fine. I'm going to add the seeds in there. And so I'll have like this nice dark bleed around where the seeds would go. Kind of like a shadow. Still very wet though. <coughs> Okay, we can work on the green part a little bit. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab this lime green, and we're just gonna hit, just put some down on the edge here. You don't want this white line, you want it to look more natural. So we're gonna now clean off our brush and then we're gonna push them to kind of together like this. And then we're gonna remove. So it looks more natural. But it has that white area in between them. Again, you can add some more paint. If we did that in the beginning, it might have bled too much with the pink. And here you can go back in and add some more pink and have it bleed. So the green is still wet. I'm going to fill in this whole green area. Oops. And we're going to add that darker green. Now this is still, I might get a different brush, a smaller brush, blend in too much. Get some water in there and then lift it up. It should be white. It's a tricky thing because you don't want it to bleed too much, but you want to bleed. See it's bleeding in here. To make it look more natural. If you don't, if you, the brush is not working for you, grab a paper towel, roll it up, and just go in there, and that will help. Stop the bleeding. Just fix that edge. All right, so then we got this darker green. And you can touch that on the edge. Really creamy, not super watery. You just hit that edge, it's gonna bleed. But that's okay. We want it to do that. But since it's not as wet, it's not gonna bleed as harsh. And then we want to get it here. Of 
putting the edge in. And you can take the paint and just do these like lines. You know, watermelons have those striped lines. This is the concentrated thicker paint. It's gonna still bleed a little bit because it's wet. Again, if it's bleeding too much, you just clean off your brush and you just take that off. If that doesn't work, you can grab your paper towel. Oops, mixing my green up. Just trying to get this up here a little more concentrated. This is a fun thing, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And same thing down here, we're gonna do the green. This one's still gonna have the green bleed a little bit. So I've got this wet, but then I removed it. This one kind of dried a hard edge, but that's okay. We're gonna just leave it like that. If you want, you can go in and try and take up that water hard edge and blend it. It's hard once it's there. It's doable though. You take your paper towel and go remove that. And we're gonna go grab some, <coughs> excuse me, some more of this paint. I'm just gonna dab it in those areas again while it's still damp. And then on the edge here, which we tried to make darker. You can bleed that one. Just put, add some more water. Again, because it's dried fast. I'm using my smaller brush. It doesn't really matter what size brush you have. You can use a small one, larger one. And if it's still looking blobby, grab some paper towels and take it off. So it looks a little more natural. And again, grab that darker paint. Go on this edge. Fill that in. You wanna get close to the other one. You don't want to bleed to this edge again because you wanna keep that one pretty dark. Like I told you before, I've got crimson with some burnt umber. Get a little dark in there. It's gonna be a little darker because it's the shadow of the other side. All right, and then the green's still dark. Going in now that darker green on the edge. And that will bleed a little bit. This one, we can still get even darker, like add, oops, because it kind of dried really lightly. I'm gonna add the dark edge. And showing that rind. You know, it might not have been like the green color that I wanted on the edge, but that's okay. You just play around with it. 
and it's still fairly damp. So I'm adding back that green and removing it. The rind part. It's kind of playing around with it. It's really simple. Just something to do when you're bored. See, I'm still not happy with the green pink combo over here. So I'm going to go back in, add that, and then take my paper towel, pick up that paint, and go back in and add the paint. All right, this is damp enough, but you can still add in the, the seeds. So I have black. Let's see if it will bleed. I'm just going to use black concentrated Wendigo and add in the seeds. It didn't bleed, so that's good. You want to take some of that away, though, because you don't want it to look weird. I'm going to dig. I put it down, but I'm going to take remove some of it. I know, maybe, I know that sounds kind of productive, but it looks more natural that way. So then I'll put the seed down. And then over in here, I'm turning the paper. It's just easy for me to do that. So you're putting it down and kind of removing it. It's a little too pointy. And maybe just have some more darker black on the edge. You could just make it black. I mean, that's fine too. It just looks less natural, a little more harsh. Get the little ones in here. I'm trying to keep it looking natural. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's that one. And then we'll do this little side one here. We'll have like a see it over in here. Another one on the edge. I'll add one over in here. And then one down here. I think if you make it too black, like too dark, it's kind of fake. It depends on how you want to look at it. If you want to make it more decorative, then that makes perfect sense. And what do, I mean by, what do I mean by decorative? It's something that's not found in nature. It's not as natural. So I know I kind of rambled on this tutorial, but you know, that's kind of how I work. I work as I go. Again, if you're not happy with the rind, you can just add and subtract. Not too much though. This paper does really well um, taking and putting things in. Some papers will not hold up to do that they will get all bubbly and bent out of shape kind of situation. And again, I'm going to go back in and add some of this deeper green, just on the edge and the little zigzag lines on the rind. And over in here. Because those watermelons have those stripe. Lines. There you go. That's a quickie. Watermelons. <laughs> I know it's kind of like lengthy and whatever, but now see the edge here? It's kind of not perfect, but that's okay. I mean, you can go in and fix it. Don't worry about it. See that? I fixed it. 
That's the whole point. You're supposed to just have some fun. And how good would it be to be summer right now having some juicy, tasty watermelon the sun shines out and all the craziness is gone. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm a little rambler today. I'm sorry. Excuse me for that. But I hope um, you see how easy it is. It's just basically putting a lot of water down, just pushing in the paint, moving it around. Same thing on the edge. It's not that difficult. It's really not. And you can do some fun little watermelons. You can do a bunch of little watermelons as a pattern, a border, you know, whatever you feel like doing. It's just fun to do something that takes your mind off all the stress of the day, what's going on in the world, um, you know, anxiety that you might have, and keeping things simple by just painting fruit. And fruit is great. So have a great day and take care of yourself.